This module will cover the foundation to curriculum from the social and historical perspective. One needs to be fully aware that I was, as we have mentioned in the previous lecture, there are totally four foundations that brings, uh, that supports curriculum design. We start off with philosophy, then we move on to psychology, and then the last two is social and historical. The questions that we will demand to answer is how have, how have the need of society been considered when developing a curriculum? What are the historical events that has influenced curriculum? In Malaysia, uh, politics play a very important part towards contributing towards uh, curriculum just like anywhere else in the world. So the first question we need to ask is the dimensions of curriculum design. As I was mentioned in another video prior to this, the philosophy gives us the direction. The psychology gives us the mode of transportation. But history and social factors will keep uh, you entertain and nourish you along the way. So you need all four. Um, just having a philosophy doesn't so, doesn't purely will contribute towards curriculum design. Psychology is important because at the end of the day you need to understand how people learn so you can teach them effectively. But both of these need to be situated in a context because I mean, how would we be independent of a context? So the context now comes from the society that we live in and the experience of the society. So all these four together will contribute, understanding all these four will have a great impact in how we design the curriculum. All education system are closely tied to the institutional network of society. Thus, to understand how content of schooling is shaped in any, in any society, we must understand the relationship between education and other institutions in society. In other words, to understand what is taught, how it is taught and why it is taught, we need to look at the school and the social forces that shapes curriculum. When designing curriculum, the following question need to be asked. To what extent should curriculum consider the world outside school? This is important because students will live outside school and students are expected to take the learnings from the school to the outside world. The second question you need to ask is how do change, changes in society affect the curriculum? See, one needs to understand there is a two-way relationship between society and curriculum. Society informs curriculum. In the same case, the curriculum tries to modify society. So there is a, there is a constant interlink between the curriculum itself and the society. So the issue here sometimes we always have is when we transpose uh, curriculum from one geographical religion or one cultural religion uh, region to another. Uh, if if it's not done correctly, there will always be hiccups because suddenly you see certain things don't fit in. Now society uh, or members of the society will now have to decide of what knowledge to be included in the curriculum or the body of knowledge that is considered crucial to survive in the society. Or, in, in, as I told you there, uh, if you go back to the psych philosophical uh, approach, we have talked about the four approaches from the philosophy. They use knowledge differently. They are the idealists who believe that society is best served by delivering uh, classical knowledge, like the classics, Latin and philosophy. They are people who take things very pragmatically. They are people who want to see transformations in society. So the society that, that we live in will now decide what is considered to be useful content. Now, according to Brooks, uh, there are several issues to be considered when deciding curriculum. The first of it is if, if it relates to the general body of knowledge needed by an average human being for conducting their daily lives. So in this case, uh, the emphasis on 3R and all the other survival skills that affects us on a daily basis. Now, when it is uh, related to specific 
uh, present or future situation of students. Example, to be a journalist, one needs to have good language or one needs to be mathematically inclined to be an engineer. About four important considerations to be made when one decides on what to be, what to include in a curriculum. The first body of knowledge that Berks talk about is having the ability uh, to to articulate the general body of knowledge needed for an average human being. So every member of society have this body of knowledge that allows them to function. So in, in, in let's say in our context, ability to read, write and do certain degree of arithmetic helps us to succeed in society. The next one we are talking about having specific present and future situations. So that's when all your subjects like biology, physics and chemistry, accounting and finance and all these other subjects come in. Because they have a future need and a specific need to add. The next is to develop uh, thinking skills. So subjects that are able to contribute to the larger picture allowing someone to be successful in the subject area and general life decision making. So subjects like geography comes in very well because having a, a, a good understanding of geography allows us to situate ourselves in our physical world. And then finally, uh, unavoidable requir uh, requirements. So in any political or regulated situation, there will be certain body of knowledge that is required to join in the club. For example, even in a Malaysian national perspective, the requirement to pass the na national language is the prerequisite for having successfully completing your high school degree. If you fail to pass the national language, you are considered to have failed the secondary school education. Now, there are also situations where you have to do it from a non-political situation. For example, in, in Malaysian context, <coughs> all students who have a degree from Malaysia have courses called compulsory subjects, uh, which are required cons uh, legislatively that all Malaysians need to participate. We also have uh, the same perspective can be taken from, from a discipline aspect. Uh, engineering students in many universities are required to take a certain amount of non-engineering classes and many many engineers students despise this because especially the purists who believe that they have taken a path that is dedicated towards science and maths and physics suddenly are expected to take things like economics and 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 certain amount of humanity classes which they have a distaste for